Hello, third graders. We're on chapter 20 today. Let's begin by praying a Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So jump right into 20 here. So stuff is 20, chapter 20, offering gifts of love. This chalice, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. Luke chapter 22, verse 20. All through the ages, God's children have offered sacrifices to him as a sign of their worship and love. During the Old Testament days, before Jesus came to earth, the people of God offered up many things that were dear to them. In this way, they told God that they loved his gifts, but they loved him even more. Whenever a person offered up something in sacrifice, he burned or destroyed it. This showed that he was giving it completely back to God. Farmers thank God for their crops by sacrificing the first fruits, so the first kind of group that they would harvest, first fruits of their harvest. In this way, they were saying, we believe that these gifts are from you. Thank you. Keep Please keep blessing us. And by giving their first, uh, they're also saying, we trust God that you're going to provide more. You know, it's, it's not like, well, we'll keep this because we, so we have food and then we'll give you some later. No, it's, there's a great kind of uh, trust also in giving the first of the harvest to God for the, the, the Israelites. Some men were, were made, uh, so, so, so men came, made a present to a, so men made a present to the Heavenly Father of the very things that nourished them and kept them alive. Uh, health, healthful grains like barley, wheat, and oats were baked into leavened bread and cakes. Grapes were pressed into wine. Then the good grain and wine were given to God as gifts. People in the Old Testament also offered up the bloody sacrifice of animals. They used cows, sheep, and doves. During an animal sacrifice, the priest placed the victim on an altar and put his hands on it. Then he killed the animal, shed its blood, and burned it. Holy men of the Old Testament were generous in these sacrifices. Abel, who was a shepherd, offered up his best lamb. The first thing Noah did after the flood was build a stone altar and sacrifice some of the animals from the ark. Abraham was even willing to obey God's request that he sacrifice his own beloved son, Isaac. God was only testing Abraham's test, trust and love. He rewarded Abraham by stopping him and showing him a ram he could sacrifice instead. In time, God made Moses appoint a few men to offer up gifts for all the people. These were call, called priests. The people joined the priests in praying to God. Some of their prayers were cries for help or sorrow for sin. Others were gifts of praise and thanks. Every Old Testament sacrifice had one great goal in common. Man deeply longed to make up for sin. Man wanted to restore his friendship with God. So it speaks of the priests of the Old Testament, uh, the Old Covenant, the Mosaic Covenant. Uh, and we hear of these sacrifices, so there's an, kind of giving the, the, the best of one's crops, uh, grains and such to God, kind of an offering back. You've given us it's a return gift. And then the animals, you may wonder, well, why, why, is, why is that? So part of that has to do with kind of, uh, it's, it's like giving a, like something very valuable, all right? It wasn't like they had grocery stores and stuff. So you give an animal back, it was really, you were really trusting God, and it's one way of great gratitude. As well as we, uh, there's good reason to believe that God, at, with Moses, asking them to, to sacrifice animals and stuff was partly because the Israelites were in Egypt, and uh, in Egypt, the Egyptians were, were pagans, and they worshipped different animals. So by sacrificing them, God was showing that, no, these, aren't, these, these animals are not gods. They aren't divine. Uh, God is saying, I'm, the Lord is saying, I'm the one true God. Uh, so there's a number of different uh, uh, kind of reasons why but we see this the important goal of wanting to restore relationship with god friendship when jesus came into the world people were still trying to restore friendship with god 
Jewish families went to worship God at the temple in Jerusalem. They offered up lambs, doves, and food. God was pleased with these sacrifices, but he wanted to give his people a far greater gift to offer. He wanted to give them one gift that would unite them with him to the end of time, and he wanted to give them a perfect gift. So the gifts, the sacrifice in the Old Testament, they had they, they were at a certain value, but God wanted to do something that was even more powerful, a higher gift. And the sac temple was the place where those sacrifices were offered by the the priests of the Old Testament. Jesus, God's beloved son, was, the, was that perfect gift. When he shed his blood and died on the cross, he gave God that perfect gift as a sacrifice on our behalf. The sacrifice of himself was so perfect and true that it was the best gift ever given to God. Well, yeah, see, God, God the Father, remember? It's easy. When you see just God alone many times, it's referring to God the Father, the first person of the Trinity. It was so powerful that it washed away Adam's sin and all sin, and so saved the whole human race. It opened the Father's heart and the gates of heaven. Jesus knew that men and women in all history would want and need to share in this perfect gift to God. He, so he made it possible for the perfect gift of his body and blood to be offered continually. On the night before he died, Jesus gave his apostles the power to change bread and wine into the body and blood, his body and blood in the sacrifice of the Mass. So today, all over the world, the sacrifice of the Mass continues in the same way. Listen to the priest, the words of the priest. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood. Every time you go to Holy Mass, we, we offer up Jesus Christ himself to the Father. It is the very same sacrifice as the one at Cal on Calvary. So it's, it's uh, the same sacrifice that Jesus on the cross at Mass. We're coming into real contact, and we're at the cross, and we're offering up Jesus to the Father, and we're asking that we be taken up with Jesus uh, into the love of God the Father. All right, so it's not it's not a re-crucifying of Jesus or a re it's the same sacrifice. Well, how is that possible? Well, by one helpful way is kind of there's there's a, a sacramental portal that opens up at mass. You can't see it with with our physical eye, but by eyes of faith, when the priest is saying those words, he holds up the host, kind of in a deeper level. Really, we're we're entering into that mystery where. Uh, of, of Jesus' suffering, death, resurrection, and want to be taken up with, with, our, with Jesus uh, into heaven. Uh, so on the cross, Jesus offered himself, shedding his blood for us, for our redemption. Through the ministry of the priest, Jesus is offered on the altar again without shedding his blood. So it's the, the mode and the manner is different, but it's the same sacrifice. At Mass, we not only remember Jesus' sacrifice of himself to the Father, we continue it. Or maybe better, we, we enter into that one true, that one perfect uh, sacrifice. So every time we go to Mass, we're kind of going to the foot of the cross again. And we're offering ourselves up, we're offering Jesus to the Father. Which is amazing that Jesus allows us to help offer him up uh, to the Father. That he shows how much he wants to... to us to share in his work of redemption. Now, Jesus, he's the one that, he's ultimately the one that can, saves us, but he wants us to share, be connected uh, in his, his act of, of love and unite ourselves to, to his, his sacrifice. He is the lamb, let's see here. Each time Jesus brings his sacrifice before us, uh, at Mass, let's see here. At Mass, we not only remember Jesus' sacrifice of himself to the Father, we continue it. Each time Jesus brings his sacrifice before us in a real but sacramental way you know, at Mass. He is the Lamb of God being offered continually to save our world. We can share in this perfect gift to God at each Mass. Together with the priest, we offer Jesus to the Father. This is the most pleasing, powerful gift we can ever give God. It is the most wonderful offering. It unites us with God and fills our world with his life and love. 
It's important. So we get to we get to offer up Jesus kind of in love and want to be taken up with Jesus into the love of God the Father. So we have here, this is the Jesus taken down from the cross. Beloved disciple John and Mary. And there's Jesus. You can see the pierced side. The temple was the place in the Old Testament where the, the Israelites offered sacrifice to God. The Mass is now where in the New Covenant, uh, where the new promise that God made through Jesus Christ, that we uh, get to come into real contact with Jesus' perfect offering of himself to the Father and get to unite ourselves. Right? And also get to receive him in communion. But the first, there's this uniting aspect, very important. Uh, we go out of our, we offer ourselves, and then what does God, Jesus do? He pours out his life into us. So we need to get out of ourselves if we want then the Lord to help fill us anew with his love and grace. What is the Holy Mass? The Holy Mass is the sacrifice of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The Holy Mass is offered on the altar by the priest of God under the appearances of bread and wine in memory of the sacrifice of the cross. So it still looks like bread and wine, but Jesus is, is really made present and we come into real contact at Mass. But Jesus' is perfect sacrifice uh, on Calvary at the cross. Is the sacrifice of Mass the same sacrifice as the sacrifice of the, the cross? The sacrifice of the Mass is the, sac is the sacrifice of the cross. So they're the same. The only difference is the manner of performing it. So at the cross, Jesus was bleeding. At Mass, there's the appearance, there's the host isn't bleeding. There's... Uh, it doesn't physically, outwardly look the same, um, but it is the same thing. It's almost like Jesus, he puts a veil, a mask, he's kind of, uh, he's hiding underneath, the behind what looks like bread and wine. But he's really there, and we really enter in to his, uh, get to share uh, in offering ourselves with him to the Father. So Barnabas, St. Barnabas is our saint. Barnabas, a Jew of Cyprus, was closely associated with St. Paul. He introduced St. Paul to Peter and the other apostles. When a Christian community began in Antioch, Barnabas was sent as the official representative of the Mother Church of Jerusalem to unite its members in the fold of Christ. He and Paul gave instructions in Antioch for a year. Later, Paul and Barnabas were sent by Antioch officials to preach to the Gentiles. So those are non-Jews. Uh, great success crowned their efforts, but all was not peaceful. They were expelled from some towns. Later, Barnabas took Mark to Cyprus, and Paul took Sil Sil Silas to Syria. Barnabas is spoken of simply as one who dedicated his life to the Lord. He was a man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith through whom large numbers were added to the Lord's following. Barnabas died a martyr at Cyprus during Nero's reign with the Gospel of St. Mark, written by his own hand on his chest. So there's the Gospel. And here's stone. Most likely he was stoned, at least what the tradition uh, says. Um, and it, Barnabas actually means son of encouragement. So he encouraged others. So as we're talking about the, the Mass and Jesus is offering, one helpful thing uh, with, with Mass is when you go to Mass, to even have an intent, a particular intention. Maybe, maybe it's for yourself. Uh, maybe it's for someone in your family. Someone you know needs those prayers. And during the middle of Mass, when the priest raises the host and he's up there with those prayers, you can be offering. You say, Jesus, I offer this, this Mass uh, especially in intercession for this or for this need or for myself. All right, that's one beautiful way that you can unite uh, your, your kind of self to the Mass. Jesus is offering at the Mass. And even at Mass, we offer kind of what's maybe difficult in our life. We say, Jesus, help me to carry my cross as well. And also in Thanksgiving, Jesus, thank you for your blessings. So we bring all of that uh, to Mass. I want to offer it, unite it with Jesus.